Science Daily, January 2, 2014. The article asserts that traditional management on a worldwide basis fails to take into account, quote, the extraordinary ecological importance of large spawners and the unintended consequences are lower harvest in terms of fish and smaller fish within the stock. In a 1985 study, Jeffrey Hart and three others reported on two stocks of Chinook transplanted to their Alaska hatchery. They reported the difference in rates of early male maturity observed between two stocks of Chinook salmon supports previous findings that male age at maturity in this species is strongly heritable. A 1993 study by David Hankin and others reports that as early as in 1904, quote, Rudder noted that the selective removal of older and larger fish resulted in an unnatural abundance of jacks, meaning small early returning males. In their own mating experiment with Chinook brood years from 1978, 79, and 80, they showed that mating young two-year-old males with any age females would produce unusually high ratios of jacks. Daniel Heath and three others observed, a genetic component to precocious sexual maturation has been demonstrated in many salmonid species, such as Atlantic salmon, rainbow trout, arctic char, and coho salmon. In their own 1993 experiment on Chinooks, they observed the specific jack ratio of jack-sired fish, Chinook, was 45%, whereas the specific jack ratio of non-jack-sired fish was 27%. In other words, jacks produced jacks at 1.7 times the rate of older male kings pairing with other kings. From the UW School of Fisheries, 1995, in a study of 108 Chinook populations, Considerable evidence indicates that size-selective fisheries may have complex and deleterious effects on Pacific salmon populations. As early as 2002, the Alaska Department of Fish and Game was aware of the issue. They showed that from 1986 to 2001, in-river sport fishers harvested disproportionately older Chinooks than were returning. To the question, is there a decline in the number of large early run king salmon in the Kenai River, they answered yes. And consistent disproportionate harvest of early run king salmon in May and early June could likely have long-term biological impacts. 2004, Epson Olson and six others in nature with regard to northern cod. There is growing anxiety about the consequences of fisheries-induced evolution because such evolution may ultimately result in lower sustainable yields and reduced stock stability. 2005, Birkeland and Dayton. They observed that older fishes are usually also larger, and fecundity also increases exponentially with size. This is important because commercial fisheries and especially recreational fisheries often target the larger fish. And later, Thus, reproductive potential of populations is disproportionately affected when fishermen target large individuals. 2007. The biological and economic consequences of fisheries-induced evolution are potentially severe. Such evolution may also be slow to reverse, or even turn out to be practically irreversible. They observe, these evolutionary changes, life history traits, size, age at maturity, unfold on decadal timescales much faster than previously thought, and the resultant needs for mitigating actions have thus become compelling. 2007 again, decreasing age and size at maturation can induce cascading effects on population dynamics. Fisheries-induced evolution was found to be not only possible, but also likely under realistic rates of exploitation and size selectivity of fisheries. Even in the absence of concrete evidence for fisheries-induced evolution, rapid evolutionary responses have been considered so likely that they should be accounted for in management and conservation strategies. Last year, 2013, a study involving 17 brood years of Chinook. Positive relationships between body size with fitness traits and reproductive success have been well documented in Pacific salmon. They add, for example, skewed sex ratios within a population can reduce the effective number of breeders and impact mate choice processes. 
We've known for decades that the offspring of Jack Chinook salmon, shown here in blue, are mostly more jacks. Is this relevant to sustaining world-class Kenai River Trophy king salmon returns? According to this 2013 report from Alaska Department of Fish and Game, the average weight of Chinook harvested in Upper Cook Inlet has dropped from 34 to just 15 pounds over the last 25 years. Meanwhile, the percentage of fish aged two years or less has climbed to 66% from 10. Fish and Game observes that, similar to other Chinook salmon stocks in Cook Inlet, late-run Kenai River Chinook salmon are experiencing a period of lower abundance, with the 2013 run being one of the lowest on record. And the Kenai River early-run Chinook salmon return in 2013 was possibly the lowest on record. Fish and Game again this year. Because the early-run stock is harvested primarily by recreational fisheries, Run size is an important consideration because of its effect on catch rates. Small runs are expected for the near future. The 2012 total run was the smallest on record, representing more than a fourfold decline from peak abundance in 2004. And, during the five most recent brood years, 2004 through 2008, productivity residuals have been negative, equivalent to a 26% decline in productivity. In another paper this year about the Kenai River Late Run Chinook, Fish and Game observes the bottom line. In 2013, 22% of the harvest was of one ocean jacks, the highest proportion of jacks ever observed. Sex composition was predominantly males. In 2013, the harvest was composed of 88% males, the highest proportion ever observed. Back to this year's Fisheries Management Series, Fish and Game notes a major in-river sport fishery occurs here, and anglers can expend in excess of 300,000 days per year fishing for Kenai River Chinook salmon. The sport fishery harvests both early and late run Chinook during the year, but not so commercial fishermen. Fish and Game observes the early run Kenai River Chinook salmon run migrates through Cook Inlet in May and June, and therefore, because they aren't fishing, I add, it receives very little commercial exploitation. And here we come full circle. There is one Kenai River fishery, an in-river fishery, that indisputably, intentionally, and selectively harvests the largest fish of any return from both the early run and late run of the world-class Kenai River Trophy King Salmon. And for decades, the Alaska Department of Fish and Game has sanctioned the selective harvest on an ever-shrinking subpopulation of the largest, oldest, most fertile Kenai River Chinooks. The evidence is in. This management approach has contributed, as expected, to the disappearance of trophy-sized fish and more jacks siring jacks, returning increasing numbers of small fish in a systemic decline leading to the bottom.